This video is part of an introduction to a first course in modelling, analysis and control. Here, the focus is on an introduction to first order models. A model, then, is simply a collection of all the statements you can make about a given system. So, for example, component equations such as voltage equals current times resistance or forces mass times acceleration. We might make common sense observations such as whether points share the same velocity, speed or current. We might do balance equations based on flow, volume or energy. This video is going to look at systems for which the resulting model reduces to a first order differential equation of the form given here. You can see a dx dt plus bx equals c u. Balance equations then. So a common way of forming models is to create a balance equation. So for example, the forces on a mass must sum to mass times acceleration. And you can see here, I've given a typical equation, the sum of the forces is m dv dt. The voltage across the components in a loop sum to the applied voltage shorts. So the sum of vi equals the applied voltage v. Flow balance. So for example, you might get this with fluid or with energy. So the sum of flows must match the accumulation here, the rate of change of volume with time. We're going to use such balance equations to form models for a number of different systems. Core examples then. So a reminder that this video is a very quick overview. You need to use the slower and more complete resources to learn from and see the fine details. So this is to give you a quick overview and understanding of what's important not to do the slow teaching. So example one, speed of a car. Let the car be mass m and go at velocity v. Let the force on the road be f and let the friction force be bv. So if we were to do a force balance, what we would get is the force produced by the engine minus any friction forces is going to give you mass times acceleration. Now, we can actually write that down as an equation very, very quickly. So the engine force is F, the friction is BV, and mass times acceleration is m dv dt. And so you see, just by writing down the English sentence and doing the force balance, we've derived the model. What about a spring damper in parallel? Well, again, we can do a force balance here, and we can write that the force F that's applied has got to give you the force across the spring. You can see that's F1 plus the force across the damper. You can see that's F2. And so therefore, the equation I get is F equals F1 plus F2. So next, I need to consider what the component equations might be. Well, for the spring, the force F1 is Kx. For the damper, the force F2 is B dx dt, and therefore I get the model F equals B dx dt plus Kx. What about a resistor capacitor in series? Here we're going to do a voltage balance. So you can see I've got an applied voltage V, and that has to match the voltage across each component. So the applied voltage V is the voltage across the resistor R1 plus the voltage across the capacitor C. Now I've given those names. So we end up with a formula V equals V1 plus V2. So again, we now go to the component equations and we see V1 is R1i, but we know that i is dQ dt. And because I know in advance, I'm going to write this as therefore as V1 equals R1 dQ dt. And Q is going to be C V2. So when we substitute those in, to this equation here, we end up with this model here, that V equals dQ dt times R1 plus Q over C. What about a resistor inductor in series? So this follows the same lines as the previous slide. So we go right straight to writing V equals V1 plus V2. V1 the voltage across the resistor, V2 the voltage across the inductor. Again, we say we need the component equations. So we get V1 equals I R1 and V2 equals L di dt. And then we just plug those into this balance equation and we get our model V equals I R1 plus L di dt. Finally, 
let's look at a tank level system where we're going to need some form of flow balance. So the flow balance here is going to be that the accumulation of water in the tank is going to be the flow in minus the flow out. So I can write that down as dv dt, so that's the rate of change of volume in the tank, is flow in minus flow out. And again, we go to our component equations. So we get the flow out depends upon the depth h. OK, so that's a component equation you might not know, and it's a simplification, but we'll use that for this course. And therefore, we also know that dv dt, the rate of change of volume in the tank, is going to be the cross-sectional area times the rate of change of depth, dh dt. So combining those all together, we get our model a dh dt equals f in minus kh. Other examples then. This is an introductory video to introduce principles rather than cover all the examples you need to know. To some extent, good engineers need to be confident to derive the models and determine the appropriate balance equations without prior knowledge of a given system, so without being taught in the first place. So you've got to focus your learning on understanding principles rather than memorising particular examples. So in an exam, you need to expect to tackle an unseen example, so it won't be based on your memory. Analogies then. So these are quite an important point. A mass resists changes in velocity or displacement, and you'll know that because we have the equation f equals m dv dt. Okay? An inductor resists change in current or charge flow, and you'll know that because we have the equation v equals l di dt. So you see both of these have got this derivative term in them. And so those two terms are analogous. They resist changes in the flow rate. A spring stores energy linked to displacement, and a capacitor stores energy linked to charge. And similarly, you could say the force across a spring depends on displacement, and the voltage across the capacitor depends upon charge. So those two are analogous. A resistor dissipates energy as heat linked to the current flew the resistor. And a damper dissipates energy as heat linked to the velocity. So again, you can see those two components have got analogous behaviours and analogous equations. So what you need to do is think about how you might extend these insights to other systems, fluid, heat, rotational systems, but remember to think about the units when you do your analogies. Okay, so we've done an analogy between a damper and a resistor because they both have similar units. They both have the units per T. So I, I might have V equals Ri, where I, I could write that as R dQ dt. And similarly, for a damper, you've got the force equals BV, or you could write that as B dx dt. So you can see they've got the same units in terms of the state. Analogies then. So what analogies are there between first order electrical and mechanical systems? And we note that we've already agreed that there's a basic analogy between a resistor and a damper, a mass and an inductor, and a spring and a capacitor. So if we look at the models that we've derived, you can see a resistor capacitor is going to be analogous to a damper spring, because the resistor is analogous to the damper and the capacitor is analogous to the spring. But you notice in series here, in parallel here. And if you look at these two equations, you can see the analogous structures and the analogous position of the key parameters. There is resistance parameter in the same position as the damping parameter and so on. Now similarly, if we look at these two below, the resistor inductor and the damper mass, you can see a resistor analogous to a damper and inductor analogous to a mass. And again, if you look at the parameters, you see the key parameters appear in the same position in the equations. So a question for you. What analogies can you find between systems in different disciplines? And how might you exploit these to gain insights into how systems behave? Some conclusions then. This video has introduced some simple engineering systems that can be represented by first-order models. 
you should understand the core steps in deriving these models so that you can apply to other scenarios and systems. And you'll see that we've essentially used a balance equation supported by component equations. Now, understanding analogies is a core learning outcome. So make sure you understand the analogies between various systems as this will help you understand behaviours and also how you might extend your knowledge to other systems. And finally, a reminder, keep up with your quizzes and tutorial sheets and make sure you bring any questions to the contact sessions.